Hi. Um, so everyone wants to hire um, senior developers, right? Everyone's looking for them. The demand to increase headcount in many tech companies is rising, even with the difficulty of hiring for top talent. To counteract that, some big companies have removed the required college requirement degree barrier to entry. But even though with online training and all the various boot camps around, our industry has a surplus of bright junior developers but a lack of open junior positions. Your people are the most important and valuable resource. You can only innovate if you have the right talent with the right skills. Current traditional hiring practices are not meeting demands. Companies need new solutions. Implementing an apprenticeship or an upskilling program is such a solution. I run a six month apprenticeship program for Huru, that's now Qantas Hotels in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, it was considered a great success and we are cu currently examining options to run it again. By definition, an apprenticeship is training in an art, trade or craft under a legal agreement that defines the duration and conditions of the relationship between the master and the, appren and the, the apprentice. An apprenticeship program allows employer to evaluate talent and provide apprentices with a structured learning period. The nature of the apprenticeship is to allow the apprentice to learn a great deal about the company and the industry in a short amount of time under guided mentorship. When we talk about apprenticeships, you usually hear three terms, an apprentice, a journeyman, and a master. So previously, apprenticeship has been around for thousands of years, and generally, uh, they've lasted between two to seven years, depending on the particular trade under which the apprentice became a journeyman. The term derived from the French word for day, journey, and basically meant that the journeyman would be paid by day for their work. After a period of ex ex extensive experience, a journeyman could submit a piece of their work to the appropriate guild for assessment and approval. If this masterpiece was accepted, they could become a master craftsman and could set up their own workshop and train apprenticeships. So we are going to consider more about apprenticeship stage. Now, how is it different to an internship? Okay, so by definition, an intern is a student or trainee who works sometimes without pay in order to gain work experience or satisfy requirements for qualifications. So when we think about interns, we usually think about students. They focus on one specific project that implies that they will do the dirty work, and we are talking about the short-term engagement. On the other hand, when we talk about an apprentice, an apprentice is a person who is learning a trade from a skilled employer. They have agreed to work for a fixed period of time at relatively low wages. So when we think about an apprenticeship, we think of that it's on-the-job training, it focuses on sustainable growth, it's a longer-term engagement with real applications to your work, uh, it has dedicated mentoring, the classroom instructions relate to the occupation uh, where the apprentices can hone this, the craft. You have some form of talent evaluations and usually completion of the apprenticeship usually results in a full-time role. Now, why should you start one? Well, first, hiring junior makes for better team workflows. Uh, it improves your diversity, it opens your candidate pool and helps foster support for diversity in initiatives. It increases diversity of the background and skill of potential candidates. It improves your performance because we all know that diverse teams have better performance, um, increased productivity. It um, supports simple explanations and better understanding of the code base. Um, along the way, you get things documented and communication becomes explicit between all the team members. Hiring junior supports also team development because it improves retentions in your team. Uh, it ensures employees are trained to best practices and company processes. It provides employers with a competitive edge through um, a well-trained and flexible workforce. It addresses the skill gap between seniors and juniors. It supports the scale of fast growth companies. And you also save time and money on recruit recruiting and onboarding talent. So what do you need? Well, at a minimum, you need an apprentice, a mentor, and a company that's willing to make the investment. So company buying. You will need senior leadership support, a company's leader that wants to build a talent pipeline to grow the company. It's important to understand that it's going to take time and money to ensure that your program is a success. You also want to have team buying. 
a team that is willing to mentor and work directly with the apprentice. Apprenti apprentices succeed when the team is dedicated and committed to working with a beginner. And you also need a person responsible. It can either be a person to drive the program and or a mentor and apprentice that are all invested in the success of the program. So how do we start one? Well, first we need to understand the needs of the company. And so let's consider some of the key factors. For one, um, you should consider the length of the program. Do you want to do it over three months, six months, 12 months? Uh, the number of apprentices that you can uh, support in your team. Who's in charge of what? What they should know before they start the program, what they should learn during the program, and how they should learn that. You should also develop a plan for defining realistic expectations of what you expect to get uh, in the end of the program, set timelines, uh, plan how to source and hire apprentices, develop processes and logistics around the program, and set a budget for the whole thing. Um, when we're sourcing candidates, things that you should consider is how will you recruit and screen candidates and ensure that all the requirements are met? Uh, decide what you're looking for, uh, decide pay grade, decide on promotion channels, where you're going to promote the program and how you're going to reach more underrepresented groups. Define the hiring process, adjust for a beginner level, set the dates in the calendar for all the hiring process that you want to have, select a hiring committee from the team that you're working with, and then make the hiring a team decision. Uh, so how did we do it at Huru? Uh, well, we started with the job ad, we advertised how Huru Aquinas Hotels works and what our values are and the culture and the perks that you're going to get while working with the company. Then we continued by saying that who we are looking for, and I believe that knowledge is not enough, that success in life depends on both knowledge and character. So we define the person that we are looking for. So we wanted somebody with basic programming skills, preferably in Ruby, demonstrated self-learning, have a growth mindset, have drive, demonstrate initiative, communicate well, and is interested in her purpose and values. When we asked people to submit an application, we asked for three things. We asked for a CV, uh, we asked answers to those four questions, and then a code sample. For those four questions, when I reviewed all the applications that were sent in, I created a rubric for answers. So for example, the first question that was, why programming? What have you done to expose yourselves to programming so far? Uh, I have a rubric for average answer, good answer, and great. So the average one would be, haven't done much, or said they've done some things, but not showing anything for it. A good answer would be, have done some things along the way, but not displaying much drive. And a great answer would be, have invested time and efforts, kept a progress log, care about what they are learning, and have done more and beyond because they care. Just an example. For the code sample, I wanted to be conscious that some people have limited time, that they don't have enough time to provide a lot of code samples, so we gave them two options. We gave them, provide a code sample of something that you already have, that you are proud, in, proud of, or um, an option to solve one of two code challenges. One of the code challenges that we did was offer a Scrabble score, which is pretty much taken out of the exorcism, or it's available in many places online. And the other one is validating a credit card number. Uh, we also told them what we are looking for in the code sample. So we looked for knowledge of a recent textile organization and refactoring. We wanted to see division into logical components and methods with clear responsibility. And then we wanted that all the requirements are laid out per the specifications of the exercise. Once we reviewed all the applications that we got in, the next step was to invite people to a non-technical interview. This interview was done with the uh, engineering manager and an HR person uh, to check the, for the characteristics that we were looking for. We created um, a set of six questions for all the candidates, plus two custom ones depending on the candidate. And then we allowed for a bit of time to allow them to ask us questions in return. 
Uh, one of the questions, for example, was, tell us about a time that you worked as a part of the team. What was your contribution? What did you like, dislike about the team environment? And what was the outcome of the team's work? We were um, defining exactly what we were looking for with each, with each question. For, in this one, we look for signs that they know their own strengths and weaknesses, can empathize with others, um, someone who can appreciate the benefits that we receive from others on the team and wish to reciprocate. Once they passed that phase, we went to a technical interview. The technical interview, all the phases of the hiring process was done with at least two people from the team. And we tried to always have a, a male and a female on the um, interview. The technical interview was done with... Uh, two developers from the team. Once again, it included set questions that were selected and adjusted for beginner level. I also ran it by an existing junior at work to check that it was appropriate and not to advance for the juniors. And then the last phase in the hiring process was an in-office visit. Um, it included two pairing sessions, one on uh, actual code that the um, team is working on, which was pretty consistent at the time for all the candidates. And then the second one was on the Scrabble score problems from the code challenges, because none of the people that made it to the in-office visit actually used that. So it was a good way to do the same thing with everybody to see how they approach that. Uh, and then they also got a chance to meet and interact with the rest of the engineering team. Uh, the idea was, again, that every step of the way, the team has a voice in who should continue to the next stage. So all the team has a buy-in with who got selected. Um, the other thing to remember about the hiring process is to communicate continuously with the candidates, which means that every step of the interviewing process, I will inform them of what's happening next, what the next steps will be, and when they should be hearing from me. And last, we offer to provide feedback to everybody that has been unsuccessful. Uh, we've done this on request, and pretty much every single candidate asks for feedback on what they can do to improve their chances for next time. Once you have apprentices that you selected and that you want to work with, you need to develop a program. Um, so some questions to ask is what kind of training will be delivered, uh, what to include in the curriculum, what competencies do you want them to exit with, who will be the program coordinator? How will you measure and evaluate the ap apprentice outcomes? Um, there are quite a few companies in Melbourne that over the last few years have done some type of apprenticeship programs. And I want to mention three. Um, I want to mention Envato, Culture Amp, and Huru or Qantas Hotels. Each one chose a completely different approach of how to run the program. So I want to talk about how to guide. Uh, you want to set realistic expectations, prepare the team and the mentors, consider onboarding, and consider training. Um, each one of those companies that I mentioned chose a different approach. So, for example, Envato chose to, they got illegal exceptions to advertise to women only. They hired two women at a time. They've run this now three times in a row. The two women that they work with get a full-time mentor that works with them, and then they go on team rotations and work on actual um, work problems that they have while they learn new things along the way. So this is more like ad hoc, we'll do the work, and then when we find a problem that we don't know, we'll stop and we'll chat about that. Culture Arm did a different approach where they did, uh, they hired for the first, they've run it twice. Uh, I think every time they've hired 10 juniors. They started with um, doing every week two days of learning and two days of, and three days of actual work on the teams that they got assigned onto. They uh, found out that this was too much context switching and they, they didn't work very well, so they ended up doing uh, a full week of study with every third week. Uh, so that's a different approach with, um, again, a dedicated instructor. And then we have the Huru, which was the program that I ran, and that was a week on and a week off. So a week on learning theory and working with me, and then a week off working with the teams while having team rotations. So different things to consider when you plan the program. Uh, how to guide, we mentioned setting realistic expectations. Uh, we also want to prepare the team and the mentors. So for example, I did a session with the team 
uh, on how uh, to pair with a junior. I did the same sessions with the apprentices. Uh, it gave everyone the same foundation and a common language of how to talk, how to, talk to each other while they pair. Uh, with onboarding, I started introducing many of the workflows in engineering teams. For example, um, how to approach learning, how to pair program, how to do uh, code reviews, um, how to give feedback, how to debug code in Ruby, how to do retrospectives. All the things that are around actually writing code. And then the training is um, different depending on how you decide. Uh, you also should define success. What, uh, what will success look like for the program that you're running? Uh, for example, setting milestones. Uh, various companies choose different ways of assessing the people that are on the program. I chose a breakable toy, uh, which gave people an opportunity to work and see, and for me to see how they've, what they've learned with their time with me. Culture Ramp went with an assessment, so the apprentice, apprentices got a project with set requirements, which each requirement was a point, up to 100 points, and that was their um, grade in the end of the program. And Vado chose personal confidence, which means the apprentices work with their mentor until they or the mentor feel that they are confident enough to go and work with the team. Or I've seen other options when people use big scary quiz that is that and sometimes can be open and can be taken as many times as you can, as you want, until you get a good grade. And then they calculate an average of all the times you try that. Different approaches. So lastly, I want to talk about my apprenticeship program. Uh, the program ran for six months and was a paid apprenticeship. The apprentices got a low rate for the six months they were on the program. And once they finished, they, their pay got bumped to a junior level market rate pay, pay grade. It was a blend of structured learning and on the job work. Uh, we alternated academy weeks with product work and found that four weeks with the team gave the apprentice developers enough time to take ownership of story cards as well as a break from the intense learning period. I created a curriculum that is available online that you can have a look uh, for every week. And you can see that in the first week we introduce more uh, Git, an introduction to command line, and various other things. And then it got more advanced as the weeks went through. Most days were consisted of theory sessions in the morning, and then uh, which included code alongs as well, and then self-work periods usually in the afternoon. Uh, things that we've done in the program, we've done pairing a lot. Um, we... Um, Locked one hour for exorcism a day, every day of um, academy weeks. We found that unless we block it for an hour, like the whole morning's just gone sometimes, depending on the exercise. Um, exorcism allowed us to also um, compare code solutions and, and discuss better options and better design uh, paradigms. We... Um, we implemented a gradual uh, release of responsibility models where, for example, if we use exorcism, gradual release of responsibility means uh, I do first and you watch, then we do together where I lead, then we do together where you lead, and then, or you do together without me, uh, but still in a pair, and then you do individually by yourself. So you slowly get more and more responsibility on the work that you do. So with exorcism, for example, we started um, the first couple of weeks we've done mob programming when one of the persons in the room was in charge of the keyboard and then everybody else worked together on solving the problems then continued with pairing of two groups of two and then within two months we had moved to doing the exercise in the exercises individually by themselves uh, we've done student lightning talks of small topics that i didn't really want to cover so that gave them an options to practice um, given presentations, which they've then taken to local meetups. We've read three technical books throughout the six months. Uh, for example, Puto, 99 Bottles, and another one from Avdi Green. We employed a breakable toy, which is one of what, um, which is defined in a book that's called Apprenticeship Patterns as a personal project that you work on to learn 
uh, concept that you're trying to learn at the moment. Uh, they practice what they learn and was used for their final evaluation and assessments of their knowledge and understanding. We did fortnightly one-on-one, so they did one-on-ones with me as the, um, the instructor and also with the engineering manager on alternating weeks. We had fortnightly retros when they told me that I'm making them work too hard and I need to let go. Uh, each one of them was matched with a mental body just to make sure that they have somebody to talk to that they feel comfortable with. They had, uh, we had team sessions, so I got more uh, buy-in from the team by having the actual engineering team run some of the sessions that were in the program. For example, getting the DevOps guys to teach about AWS. Uh, and we had team rotation. When we started, we thought about doing team rotations that would be every month, but we found that it was too quick. So we ended up doing rotations every two months uh, on each team. Um, they got practical work, they learned how different teams work, uh, it helped with knowledge transfers between the teams because then you have shallow silos of knowledge and the team got to know the apprentices and they became part of the company. In the end of the program, placements were based on organizational needs and the apprentice wishes as well as, um, as what they've, which teams they worked and which ones they liked best. As a result, all four apprentices have selected teams and have been productive members of these teams for the past two years. Um, building a developer apprenticeship in your organization creates a continuous learning environment. It helps all your engineers understand the technology stack, the culture, and shared vocabulary. It helps the team engagements and retentions. It means investing in the team. You will benefit from introducing fresh perspectives and ideas you will recruit great candidates that, you will, that will help shape your company's future engineers. So why not start one now? Um, thank you so much. <laughs>